for me, any form of social injustice is just wrong. Society should be a place where everybody is equal before the law, irrespective of your positioning, your status, your family, or your background. In the life of a gay man, there are said to be two closets. The first closet is where he stays, you know, for fear of stigma, discrimination, and even violence, where he tries to discover himself and try to convince himself that he wasn't really a freak of nature after all. The second closet is where he finally gets to associate with like minds, where he gets to band together, you know, with his friends and those who share a common sexual orientation. But the mega question here is, where does he find the strength? Hello and welcome to Untold Facts. I'm Moses Sumogana, where we tell it just the way it is, however uncomfortable it may sound to you or even to me. I have two very, very interesting guests, as usual. Very first is um, the man in the burgundy suit. Mr. Olumidema Konjuala is a sexual health and rights promoter. Um, he's Mr. Olumide, through his activism, has engaged policymakers and stakeholders at the local, national, regional, and international human rights space. Thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Olumide. Thank you for having me. And um, yes, the lady who is um, giving us the Margaret Thatcher pose, Pamela Adie. Yes, I got that right. Yes, Pamela is a business strategy consultant, writer, media, and communications expert, feminist, and human rights defender. Wow, she seems to be both a master and a jack of all trades. <laughs> Thank you so much, Pamela, for joining us. Thank you. All right, now, let me start with you, Olumide. When a guy or a lady, you know, what they call emerging, you know, gay man or a gay woman, gets to, you know, understand that he likes boys or she likes girls. And then, of course, we, we have the stigma, the social, social stigma, the social uh, discrimination, religious, family and what have you how would you advise such a person to go through that journey you know to reduce the punches i think how was it like for you i think the thing is you know sometimes you cannot um totally remove the fact that people have to actually work that journey whether the one that takes them through the journey of eight or the one or the one that's going to take them through the journey where they find self-love but whichever way they had to go into work that journey. And I think one of the best ways, you know, people have worked this journey from my past experience, you know, in working with the community and with the job I do, is mm -hmm. the fact that people have to first of all be self comfortable in their own skin. And they realize that they are okay, they are not sick, they are not crazy, nothing is wrong with them, they are not different, and they're not the only one across the world. Pamela, what would you say to that young girl who is still locked up in the first closet and never wants to come out? Well, I can understand um, where she is right now. Um, I was there as well at some point in my life. But as, as Limide said, you know, people have to work their, their journeys. I worked mine, it took me a while, but I eventually got to where I am now. Um, so uh, just, you know, take your time, understand yourself, look for role models, um, people who, who would inspire you. I remember you know, when I was still struggling um, with with myself, you know, I I had a lot of role models, um, successful people, and I looked up to, and I said to myself, "Wow, these these people, you know, are successful, and nothing is wrong with them, and they are, they are happy, and so you know, that that means nothing is really wrong with me." And as Illumide said, you know, that's something that takes time. And you know, so everyone has to work their own journey. But eventually, you know, you, you get to that point where you just have no other choice. I mean, looking at you now, looking all pretty, and you know, you sound so confident. We know that you know it wasn't an easy ride. It was, you know, really more more bumpy than smooth. You know, for you and for those you know out there. But what is the one thing that you would say, you know, gave you th those guts? What is the one thing that you would say was, you know, for, you know, personally, you know, taking out outside your role models or, you know, those external factors within you, what was it that really gave you that got to, to move on? I think for me, <coughs> and I've said this before, <coughs> excuse me, I got to a point where my pain was much more than my fear. And 
there was just there was I, I got to a point where there was no other way. So that's 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 what propelled me. All right, um, I'm gonna paint this picture. Really, it's actually from a friend, a very close friend. You know, he complains about a friend who is gay. By the way, he complains about you know his social relationship, you know, with his peers. Now he enjoys you know hanging out with his friends who are not necessarily gay, straight friends, by the way. Now he wants to hang out in the bar. He wants to you know share you know stick of cigar. He wants to take you know two shots of vodka with them. He enjoys their company, but at the same time he feels like the white elephant in the room because he cannot be himself. You know he cannot be you know, be the gay banker that he is, a banker who is gay, rather. Now, you can see that there is this both psychological and social dilemma or conflict that he's going through. How would you advise such a person? There is a way that the society detects on how we live our life. So even without him not being gay, you can be rest assured that there are other things that, you know, hold back who he is. To make you feel odd. That, that could make you feel like as if you're hard among your peers. Mm. But, you know, one of the things I say to people is the fact that there is nothing you can do. If people have the chance and opportunity to change who they are, they will buy it. And the moment you realize, like Pamela said, the moment you get to that crossroad where you know you've tried every single road method you tried deliverance, you've gone through church yourself, you've gone through prayer yourself, you've gone through every single thing you go through mm. just to fit in. Because at the end of it, it's about fitting into this, what the society say is correct and what the society think is right. Mm. The moment you get to that crossroad, you then begin to realize that, you know, there is no other road. All right, now, still speaking about, you know, associations, you know, um, there are some people who might have left, you know, the first closet. You know, they've come to terms, yeah, this is who I am. This is my orientation. Now, moving into the second closet, you know, where you have to associate with like minds closet. I actually don't even like the word closet, but it just makes you feel, feel bound. But that's what it is. Now, we know that they've accepted themselves, but when it comes to, you know, associating with like minds or those who share, you know, same orientation, they get to put up a wall and they get so, some of them really get outrightly rigid. Why is that? Is that, is that some sort of, you know, a fact or a prejudice that society might have imposed on us? Were you there? Um, I never really experienced that okay. um, personally. Uh, what was it so like for you? For me, um, being in the same space as uh, you know, as other LGBT community members, I felt free. I didn't. Okay. I didn't experience that blockage or you know that um I, I felt like trying to I wear could be a different myself. identity yes i <laughs> felt like I, I could be myself i didn't need to I, I didn't feel any pressure to do anything differently or but i but i i can see how some people might feel um might have a, a sort of blockage um i personally uh, believe that you know you have a, a person has to come out to themselves and you know you you may come out to your friends and to your family but you may still not have come out to yourself wow so i think that can can um, impede social in interactions and self-truth yes yeah. because while people know that this is it and this is that you yourself you haven't accepted it so it's difficult for you to live openly and freely when you, 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 you're not okay with yourself. So this is really more, you know, more personal, personal trust issues. Would yes. you call it that, Olumide? Yes, because you know, one of the things also is the fact that people you know, might feel very okay hmm. connecting with like mind in the same space. Hmm. But where the problem usually comes from is connecting with like mind, they come across in general space. So I can connect to it, you know, you can connect with me, for example, or Pamela or anybody as friends. And then you get into a very open space. People don't want some to kind of associate with themselves. Nobody wants a stigma. Yeah, you know, especially when they feel like, or oh, it's already in their head, people think I am. Mm. So they try as much as possible to avoid anything True. or anything that can give a lead way to say, oh, he is, he's not, she is, she's not. And it, which is why I said, you know, from the beginning, it's a whole lot of journey. 
it's about self-truth it's about you know accepting you know to, your, to yourself and she said something really which is really pretty quite important the whole world can know who you are but you can continue to stay fight your own battle internally everybody across the world can know oh this guy is gay this i mean she's a lesbian oh he's bi or she's bi but that person themselves might still be going through a very difficult time accepting who they are and you and you know with that kind of attitude you see a reflection of that in how they engage with people whether within the community or outside the community this is really a tough one it, it, it is and you know I, what, <laughs> deeper what, than I, than I what expected. he just described is mm. what i like to call internalized homophobia okay where you know you, you exactly what mm -hmm. what what he said you're not even you, true you, to you, yourself you, you believe everything that has been said about you in, in a negative way and you internalize it you accept it and you begin to express it so it's 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 you're fighting yourself all the time constantly but you're also reflecting that bad you're reflecting on other people yes. that you come across so not, so sometimes it's not like it, it's not like you hate them but it's just the fact that you're fighting your battle and in that process you're reflecting that yeah. self it on, on people that you come across every single day. If you had a choice, would you still be a gay woman over again? First of all, I don't have a choice. But even if I did <laughs> have the choice, yes, I would. And Why? I'd say that because I think that um, that's part of what has made me who I am today. Mm. Um, the experiences that I've gone through um, in life, you know, has made me stronger. It has made me more determined. It has made me, it has strengthened my belief in the human spirit. You know I called you Margaret Thatcher at the beginning of this year. <laughs> <laughs> the Iron Lady. Go on. You know, <laughs> it, it has strengthened my belief in the human spirit and mm. I wouldn't change that for anything. Okay, uh, just before we wrap up, um, Olumide, what would you say, final words to, you know, that boy, you know, who's still wrapped up in the closet, who, who's perhaps at the verge of thinking of, you know, taking his own life. What would you say to him? Don't do it. You're fine. You're okay. There is nothing wrong with you. You're not different. And there is no evil spirit. There is no evil spirit. You do not need a deliverance. You do not need any pastor. Because you're just fine just the way you are. What you need to do, find people who understand you. Find people who can help you walk that journey as you walk that journey of self-discovery. And you will see at the long run, you will just be fine just the way you are supposed to be fine. And there are organizations across. That is why there is internet. Google, search, you will find organization that do provide services. Yeah, find your support system. Find your support system. Amazing. That is all you can do. Pamela, to that lady who's perhaps gay but has been married off to a man and she really wants to be, you know, be, she really wants to be with a woman, what would you say to her? <laughs> it's funny you asked that question because I was once married to a man. Oh, so wow. I know exactly <laughs> where that person is. Um, I had to walk my journey. And again, I came to a point, as I said, where my pain was stronger than my fear. And I had no choice. So I can't, I, 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 I can't say when it will happen or if it will happen. It all depends. It, it, it all depends on that person. But what I can say is, um, find as Olim they said, find um, networks, uh, support systems, you know, uh, groups or something, something that or a, a place, a, a safe space where you can go and talk, you know, talk about what what's going on with you, get to know people, you know, talk to people who who are having uh, probably similar. Um, experiences, people who have been there, you know, um, just explore your options, or ex I don't want to say options, but explore your, s the, your support group, you know, try as much as, as possible to, to engage as many like minds as possible. Okay, thank you so much, Olomide. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pamela. Thank you. Um, yes, you know, you've heard from from this very wonderful, wonderful guest here on set. Find your support system. There is absolutely nothing wrong with you. Get out of the closet. What are you doing in the closet? The world is your oyster. So get out and 
make the best out of it. And um, yes, it's been untold facts, conversations like never told before, never heard before. I'm Moses Morgana, and don't forget, you can join the conversation with the hashtag Untold Facts, Instagram at Tears Nigeria, and of course on Facebook, the Initiative for Equal Rights. Many, many thanks for watching. I definitely will be seeing you next Thursday. Bye for now.